Today I'm in a place close to Ephesus which is called Mariam Anne. Marianne. Mariamene. 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 It is our second day in the area of Kusa Dasi. In the morning we explored the ancient city of Ephesus and now we are in a place called Mariam Anna Evi. And the difference with the huge and massive Ephesus is that this place is actually extremely small. But I personally like to believe that this place is not a ruin. It, it is a place that actually has a soul and that still lives there. But before we go to this place, let me tell you three little anecdotes. The very first one is related with Christian, more specifically with the beginnings of Christianity. During the first centuries of Christianity, the Roman Empire used to suppress, to basically to sweep away all the Christians because they were following one god that was different to the Roman goddesses. So when Jesus arrived to earth, he was not considered a prophet and even less of course the son of God. Now before we continue I'm not trying to turn you into Christian, Catholic nor anything like that. It's just a very interesting story to tell before we go to this place. So continuing with the story, the Christians leave their home behind, their native home, because they were running away from the Roman Empire. They used to run to the north to a place which nowadays is called Turkey. The second anecdote that I want to share with you is about the Virgin Mary. So in the respect to Christian churches, by that I mean the Catholic and the Orthodox, there are no writings, there is no mention to what really happened to Virgin Mary. And because of that, as there is no data to what really happened to Virgin Mary, both of these churches, Catholic and the Orthodox one, assume that Virgin Mary ended up ascending to heaven with God. I can imagine that so far you are thinking, but Ian, why are you telling all of this stuff? It doesn't even make sense. Hold on right there, because now I'm gonna explain the third part of this history. So for a while, let's put aside everything that I have told you so far. So I need you to help me with this idea. Now we're gonna advance on time to the 19th century. More precisely, in a village near Dillman in Westphalia, Germany. In 1825, more or less, there was a woman called Anna Katharina Emmerich. This woman had a very strong ill that made her suffer some serious visions about different kind of things. And now is when the curious part begins. Because the visions that she was having were so detailed <clears throat> that she began calling the attention of the intellectual of that area in Germany. So that is how she called the attention of a poet called Clemens Bretano. These guys started taking notes of the visions that Anna Katharina was having. And that is how, by 1835, Bretano already had so many texts of Anna Katharina's vision that he decided to publish a book. This book contained one essential part. The text says that in the visions of Anna Katharina, the Virgin Mary lived in a place called Bethany for three years and then she escaped with Saint John to a place close to Ephesus, where we are right now. In this place, Saint John built a house for the Virgin Mary. And all in all, there were three key things described in this text. The first one is that it is a lonely place, but it has very fertile slope. The second one is that you could see both the plain of Ephesus and the sea. And the third and key characteristics of Bretano's text is that according to the visions of Anna Katharina, in this place was the house that St. John built to the Virgin Mary. About half a century later, the text of Clemens Betano arrived to a place called Izmir, which is about one hour south by plane from Istanbul. In the church of Izmir, a priest read the book of Clemens Betano. He realized immediately that the visions of Anna Katharina were making tons of sense according to the landscape of the area. And besides, he knew that Ephesus was very close from Izmir. Very close is 45 minutes by car. By that time must have been like one week, two weeks walking. So this priest decided to go to Ephesus and see if he could find what Anna Katharina was explaining in her vision. For weeks he was searching around the area of Ephesus, but he couldn't find it. However, eventually he did find some nuns. The priest asked the nuns if they knew about this place that has these three characteristics. And they told him that yes, 
they knew a place that was like that. There is a hill that in the top there are ruins of a house. Besides, the soil is very fertile and if you kept walking for a while, you would see the sea and at the same time the great plain of Ephesus. So the priest ran up the hill and he arrived to a place where we are gonna go now, Maryam, which is the Turkish word for the house of the Virgin Mary. And before we go in, I want to share something which is personal and very special for me. The most important women that have been in my life share one similar condition. And that is that they are caring and they have endless love. Besides that, and something that I truly admire from women, is the ability that they have to love, especially mothers. Because if everything I have told you before, it is actually true or not, personally, it doesn't matter. What truly matters to me is that the figure of the Virgin represents all the women that are able and willing to give everything for their kids. And that, it is something that you won't find anywhere else on nature. Now, I'm gonna stop the video here, I'm gonna make a short movie, but I won't talk inside because it is a holy and sacred place, and because of that I have to try to be as respectful as I can with the rest of the people that can be their pride. And what I'm going to do is a video for all of you. The mothers and the future mothers that have always and will always be there for their kids. For us. I hope you enjoy it, and I will be seeing you soon. Ciao, ciao. This is the main shot I took of Virgin's Mary House. It is a small place and in the interior there isn't really much to see. It is very dark and there is a little altar so you can pray, which is what I did. I thank her for every single loving and caring lady out there. And I also gave her special thanks for the blessing that means having my holy mother, my two beautiful sisters and two jewels in my life, which are my grandmas. Ya, ahora. Me tiene una versión. ¿Cómo hice? Por la mañana te espero, Juana, te mareo el pie. Te juro, Juana, que tengo ganas de verte la punta del pie. La punta del pie, la rodilla, la pantorrilla, el pelo. Te juro, pana, que tengo ganas de verte la punta al pie. <risa> mm.